Hello my friends, welcome to the Photoshop Workbench. I'm Mark Johnson. A few days ago I received Corey Barker's remarkable book, Down and Dirty Tricks for Designers in the Mail. The book is loaded with inspiring effects, one of which I'd like to share with you today. We'll impart a fabulous illustrated appearance to a photo. Thanks to iStockPhoto.com for providing today's gorgeous butterfly image, and thanks to my new favorite texture source, Flypaper Textures, for providing this stunning texture that you see here. If you decide to purchase any of the Flypaper packs, I've arranged a special 15% discount for my audience, so just be sure to enter the code MARKSJ, that's all caps, MARKSJ, during checkout. Let's go ahead and get started with this spectacular illustrated look. First thing that you want to do here is duplicate the background layer and I'll do that with a command J on the Mac or control J on the PC. So I've got my duplicate layer. Now we are going to be making some edits during this process that are destructive. Normally I try to do things in a non-destructive fashion. Uh, it makes sense within the context of this particular technique to do certain things in destructive ways so uh, you'll just have to get used to that as you go through this and after you play with it a few times you're gonna find that uh, it all makes sense alright so we've duplicated the background layer now what we're going to do is tap the D key on our keyboard that will automatically set black as the foreground color and white as the background color just by tapping the D key now we want to choose image adjustments gradient map okay image adjustments gradient map is going to convert our image to black and white in a way that is ideal for this technique when you get this gradient map dialog go ahead and just press OK by clicking or tapping the D key earlier you set black and white here so you're going to have the right colors in here and that's why you can just click OK alright now we are going to duplicate this black and white layer by pressing command or control J. Let's change the blend mode now from normal to divide. When we do this the image is going to pretty much disappear but it's only temporary. Wait till you see what happens next. Now we're going to apply a Gaussian blur to this duplicate layer in divide blend mode and see what happens here. Choose filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And the amount of Gaussian blur will be um, different based upon the resolution of your image. I'm working on a low res file right now. I'm going with this setting here of 9.7. You're probably going to go with something on a high res file uh, closer to 15 or even 20. Uh, but I'm here around 10 for this low res file. And that's got a look that I like. Alright, I'll click OK. Now I want to merge this layer down into this layer, so I'm going to choose Layer Merge Down, which is Command or Control E. All right, so now we've got this one sort of black and white illustrated looking layer. Now this next step is something that I think is optional. We're going to apply a Poster Edges filter to this layer. Uh, works on some images doesn't work on others I actually find that it doesn't work very well on this image but let me show you how to do this choose filter artistic and then slide down here to poster edges alright and in the poster edges dialog here you can play around with edge thickness edge intensity and posterization um, and I just find that um, for this particular image, I think it has to do with the butterfly wings. I don't like the look of this. I like it best when it's switched off. So I'm just sort of exploring these to see how each one looks. Go for something that you like. Choose a look that you like. Play around with these three sliders and then click OK. Here is before and here is after. I don't know which one you like more. I'm partial to this. So I've actually undone the poster edges but in some cases you're going to want to go ahead and apply those alright so I've undone it here alright now we are going to be importing a texture which is going to become the background so we want to take this existing background right here and convert it to just a normal good old-fashioned layer and you can do that by double clicking on the word background and then just click OK in the new layer dialog this is now a good old-fashioned layer <laughs> now we're going to bring in this stunning 
texture. By the way, this is, um, if you're interested, this is uh, from the Flypaper Textures Collection. This is called Necropolis, and it's from the Tex Box One Pack. Uh, it's one of numerous stunning textures. <laughs> I absolutely love their textures. All right, now, we're going to bring this in. I'm going to do this with the Move tool. So I'm going to activate the Move tool, hold the Shift key, and then click and drag the texture in. And then I can just get this one out of here. All right. Now I want the texture layer to be the background or the bottom. So I'm going to drag it right down here to the bottom of the stack. So at this point we have three layers. The texture layer, we have the color image, and then we have this illustrated black and white layer on top. All right. We're going to um, activate this black and white layer and we're going to change its blend mode to multiply. But in order to see the effect, we need to switch off visibility for the color layer. So go ahead and turn off visibility for the color layer and now we'll change this black and white layer from normal to multiply. And look at that. <laughs> gorgeous! <laughs> Absolutely gorgeous. Um, you can see how it looks like we have a hand-drawn pencil drawing in here um, over this texture and the two just unify so beautifully. Now, there's something you can do, and again, I'm going to call this an optional step. There's something that you can do to change the color of these lines from black to whatever color you prefer, and that is you can clip in a hue saturation adjustment layer. So I'm going to go into the adjustments panel, which is, by the way, always visible under the window menu in alphabetical order here. All right, and I'm going to hold down Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC and click on the hue saturation icon. Now I want to use the previous layer to create a clipping mask. In other words, I'm clipping this adjustment into just the uh, black and white line art that you see right here. I'll click OK. And in the adjustments, uh, the hue saturation adjustments panel here, I'm going to check the colorize box. And then I'm going to play around with the hue slider until I get a color that I like here. And uh, let's go with something here. We'll crank up the saturation a bit to right around here. But anyway, you can colorize your lines if you want to. And to match that sort of brown background, this is probably the best color right about here. Okay, or the best hue. And the saturation, let's just play around with that a little bit. There we go. Now let me switch that on and off. Okay, there it is. Uh, just black line line art or pencil drawing and here it is with the color. I like both, I can't really decide, but just know that this is optional and because we clipped it in as a, um, a, a clipped hue saturation adjustment layer, you can modify it at any point in time. Alright, now let's turn visibility back on for this color layer which is going to make everything a little bit <laughs> strange for the moment. It's back to normal, which we don't want. Uh, go ahead and turn the visibility on for that and activate this color layer. Now we're going to add a black filled mask by holding down Option on the Mac or Alt on the PC and clicking on this front loading washing machine icon that you see right here. That's a black filled mask temporarily hiding this layer entirely. Now we're going to paint with a white brush at reduced opacity to gradually build some of the color image into here. So I'll activate the brush tool. White is already my foreground. I'll set my opacity to 50% by tapping the 5 key. Make my brush bigger okay, by tapping the right bracket key. And I'll paint over the face because I know I want this to be full color. All right. Now I want to hit these butterflies here with even less opacity. I'll go to say 30% by tapping 3. And then I'll just paint over these to allow a little bit of color to pop in off of, whoops, I tapped the wrong key there. There we go. So I'm just allowing a little bit of color through here. And now let's definitely go out to this one and allow some of its color through. What about the hand? Let's see. Maybe 10%, just a little bit of color there. There we go. Ah, actually, I'm undoing that. I don't like it. All right, so we now have a little bit of color in here. I feel like it's maybe a little bit too much color. 
So I can always reduce the opacity of this layer until the color is more subtle. Something like that. That's looking great. Now if you want to stylize this a little bit, you can play around with the blend modes for this color layer. Uh, the one that Corey recommends in his book is Linear Burn. But it doesn't work with this image. It will work with certain images, obviously, but not this image. So now I'm going to try on some others that I played around with. Here's Screen, which I think is gorgeous. Really works there. Linear Light is another one that I like. And then Luminosity is kind of nice, too. So those are some choices that you have there if you want to stylize this even further. I'm going to go with either, let's look at screen, and then let's look at normal. Boy, it's a close call for me. I like them both very much. And it depends on what you're after. I think I'll just stick with normal for now at this reduced opacity. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So it's this is pretty much done. There's one more thing you can do here. Um, last sort of step. I'm going to activate the illustrated black and white layer and add a mask. Let me shrink this image down. I'm going to grab that brush, swap black to the foreground. You can do that by tapping X. Set my opacity back to 100 by tapping 0. I'm going to use a large brush here, large soft edge brush. I'm just going to gently bump the edge of this allowing let me just show you what happened there see how we've we've sort of just slightly hidden the uh, illustrated area to reveal the texture below again that's something optional you may or may not want to do and I think I'm gonna go with it you know one last step and this really isn't part of this lesson but in this particular case I want the uh, texture to be a little brighter. So I'm going to activate the texture layer, go into the adjustments panel, and I'm going to add a curves adjustment. I'm going to just take this value here, which is kind of a uh, little brighter than a mid-tone, a highlight with a ton of detail, and I'm going to brighten things up just, just a little bit there. Okay. Now I'm going to come back to this curves layer. The mask is active. I'll do a Command or Control I to invert the mask to black. In other words, temporarily hiding the effect of that curves layer. Now I'll activate the brush by tapping B, tap X to swap white to the foreground, and I'll paint with, let's try 100%, maybe it'll be too bright, but let's see. That's actually stunning. <laughs> that really works there. So I'm allowing a little bit more light into kind of the essential parts of this scene. There you go. Yeah. That completes it. It's done. Wow. I love it. <laughs> Absolutely love it. Um, by the way, let's see here. Can I do this? Uh, I had a feeling it would, it would enlarge. Anyway, there's the before in a larger version. I don't want to size it right now. There's the before. And here is the after. Isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being with me on the Photoshop Workbench. I hope you have a beautiful day.